أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم بہو و نسلی علی رسول کریم اما بعد ناو کم ٹو سورت الصف اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سب بحل اللہ ما فی السماوات و ما فی الارض و هو العزیز الحکیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا لما تقولون ما لا تفعلون قبر مقتا عند الله ان تقولوا ما لا تفعلون ان الله يحب الذين يقاتلون في سبيله صفا كانهم بنيان مرصوص صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ديستن سوراس مدني سوراس فروم حديد to tahreem they are in the form of five pairs and this is the central pair surah to saf and surah to jumah because we have four surahs before them two pairs four surahs after them two pairs this is the central surah surah hadid started with the glory of allah but surah mujadala without its mentioning. This was one pair. Surah Al-Hashr started, Sabbaha lillahi maafi samawati wa maafi al-lard. But Surah Al-Muntahina, without it. It was the second pair. But now this central and third pair, it is unique in this sense that both these surahs are starting with this mention of glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by everything in the universe. Moreover, change of tense. Surah Tussaf starts with Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa huwa al-azid al-hakim. Exactly the same ayah with which Surah Al-Hashr started. And then the next Surah Al-Jum'ah, it will start Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Here it is past tense and there it is Muzari' and Muzari' in Arabic grammar. It covers the past, the present, and the future, both tenses. So it covers the whole time. And Mafi Samawati wa Mafi Lard covers whole existence, total universe. Universe is not a sufficient word. Total existence is Mafi Samawati wa Mafi Lard. So now it has, so to say, engulfed everything, encompassed everything, and all the time, everything in this universe has been glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from ever, is glorifying at every moment, will continue to glorify forever. Now, the rebuke or the reproach, a very important, I told you in the very beginning, common feature of these surahs. Ya ayyuhu al-lazeen amanu lima taqoolu namada tafadu. Oh, you who profess to believe, why do you say what you do not do? This difference, this gap between saying something, doing something else. If you look to your utterances, well, they are very high. And if you look to, look to your behavior, deeds, they are very low. Well, this gap it's most hateful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taqulu ma'ala tafalun that you should say what you do not do. This makt is more than wrath. 
you know, anger. You become angry with a friend when he does something which you never expected of him. Or your son, he has done something which you never expected. So you are angry. Then wrath is a higher form of anger. But there comes a stage when you have no hopes from some person. So now there is no anger. In Urdu we call it Bezari. Bezar ho jata. No hope. So this is a higher level than wrath or anger. No. This word has appeared in Surah Al-Nisa. Sa Makta. People in the Jahiliya period, before Islam came in Arabia, they used to marry their mothers, not real mothers, stepmothers. A person has died, he has left four wives. Now, the eldest son, is he is the inheritor, and how all the four have not you know, born him, she was, he was born by one mother, all the three he takes as wives. Very bad, very bad. For this, this word appears in Surah Al-Nisa. So that is the same word. Kabura maktan in the lahi an taqulu ma la tafadun. Now the fourth ayah is the climax. If you are a true mu'min, it means you claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُمَّ لِلَّهِ That is absolutely necessary. That is Logical result. Real Iman, total obedience with extreme love. These two things go to make ibadah, for which we have been created. Now if you love Allah, let Allah tell you, Allah who loves whom? Inna Allah yuhibbu al-lazina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan kannahum bunyadu marsus. Indeed, Allah loves those of His servants and bondsmen who go to war for His cause, go to fight in His way, in ranks which are so well compacted, so solid, as if it's a reinforced structure. No cracks. So this is the highest virtue in Islam. It's very important. Every philosophy has a concept of highest virtue. What's the highest virtue according to Islam? That you go to war for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you peep down in your hearts and search your souls. Are you ready for that? And this is what I told you. In 14 ayat, the purpose of the advent of Muhammad is clearly given. Why we have sent Muhammad? And then a very forceful, very passionate call to those who say we believe in Allah and Muhammad to devote themselves to fulfill that cause. So simple. So the climax of that is to go to war in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in the next four ayat, there is a mention of the history of Bani Israel. They were the former Muslim Ummah. Just recall the position that has been given to you now. They had that position for 2000 long years. From 1400 BC to 610 AD, 2010 years. They were the representatives of Allah on earth. But what they did, this should be a sign of fear for you. Maybe you also tread on the same path. Just recall, when Musa said to his people, Oh my people, why do you Annoy me. Waqat ta'alamun, you very well know. Anni Rasulullah ilaykum, I am the messenger of Allah to you. You accept me as the messenger of Allah. 
then you disobey me, you quarrel with me, you don't do what I ask you to do. And this is the, the situation actually, the whole thing is discussed in Surah Al-Maida. When after the book was given to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and now this Bani Israel which was a nation up till now, has now become the Ummah, Muslim Ummah. The Ummah actually is on the basis of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now they were said to go enter Palestine and conquer it. But to conquer Palestine, they had to go to war. And if you go to war, you have to risk your lives. They flatly refused. فَزَبَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَوْنَا قَائِدُونَ Go you, Musa, and your Lord. And let me add, take your staff also with you. You have shown so many miracles with this staff. Go and expel those people from that land. Then we shall enter. Now the condition, the emotional and psychic condition of Musa alayhi salam at that was of mocked. Bezari. That is why he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi inni la amliku illa nafsi wa akhi. Fafruq bainana wa bain al-qawm al-fasikheen. Oh my Lord, I don't have any power over anybody else except myself and my brother Harun. And the whole community is giving flat reply. Now please, I want that I should be separated from them. I don't want to stay with them now. This was the Bezari, Makht of Musa, who so much loved his nation, that when a Timti was quarreling with an Israeli, and he had struck him with his fist and done away with him. But now, this is the Makht. So he said, why do you annoy me? Why do you pinch me? فَلَمَّا زَاهُوا وَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they took the wrong turn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made also their hearts turn in that wrong direction. This is most important ayah of the Qur'an regarding this law under which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives guidance or leads astray to anybody. If you turn towards right, Allah will help you. If you take a wrong turn, well, Allah will make your heart also deviant. First, this decision is yours. When they took the wrong turn, they swerved from the right path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused their hearts also swerve in the same direction. Wallahu la yahdil qawmul zalimin. Allah doesn't guide such evil doers. And what does it mean? Allah does not forcibly guide. This is not the law of Allah. He neither forcibly guides nor forcibly sends astray anybody. If he uses force, caution, then there is no question of test. No. The choice is yours and it's free choice. Whichever way you take, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that way easier for you. So that was the behavior of Bani Israel with Hazrat Musa. Now the second phase of the history of Bani Israel. The second messenger who came to them. And when Isa son of Maryam said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. Verily, I am the messenger of Allah towards you. Musaddiqan lima bayna yaday, yadayya, min al-Tawrah. And I confirm whatever is present before me from Torah. Maybe some of Torah has been lost. Because 600 years before the coming of Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, the real Torah had vanished. When Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem, in the year 587 B.C., after that the real Torah is not there. So maybe some of it is lost. But whatever of the Torah is present before me, I confirm it. On the one hand, I confirm Moses and Torah, and on the other, 
فمبشر ام رسول اللہ کی ممباد آئی ہیو براڈ ٹو یو دی گلیڈ ٹائڈنگز آف اے میسنجر ہو ول کم آفٹر می اس بہو احمد ہز نیم از احمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دس از ون آف دی فائیو نیمس دٹ دی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سینڈ آئی ہیو فائیو نیمس اینڈ دس از دی حدیث ان بخاری فرام جبیر ابن مطرم رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ انا محمد انا احمد انا الماہی انا الحاشر انا العاقب مائی نیم از محمد آلسو احمد آلسو ماہی ماہی ہو ول ایلیمنیٹ دی فالس ہوڈ فرام دی ورلڈ حاشر ہو ول گیدر دی پیپل فرسٹ ٹو بی ریزرکٹیڈ ول بی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ آل دی ادر ول بی ریزرکٹیڈ آفٹر ہم And then Aqib, I am the last of the, all the messengers. So this is his name. فَلَمَّا جَاوْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ But when Isa came to them with the most glittering miracles of the history of all the messengers of Allah, the biggest miracles were given to Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wasalam. But what did they say? The ulama of Bani Israel قَالُوا هَذَا سَحْرٌ مُبِينٌ They said, this is clear and manifest and plain sorcery and nothing else. Dejected. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِنْ مَنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُوَ يُدَعَى إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ And who is more evil doer than the person who forges a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he is called towards al-Islam. A messenger is calling to them, calling them to Islam. Isa called them to Islam. Allahu Rabbi wa Rabbukum. Fabudu. Hada siratu mustaqim. But they said this is sorcery. The miracles that Allah gave, they said it is sorcery. Wallahu la yahdil qabu zhalameen. Allah does not guide such evil doers. Such unjust people. Again that word, forcibly. It's not his rule to forcibly guide such a people towards the right path. Now this fourth ayah of this second, first four ayah, the address was to the Muslims, a sort of reproachment, a sort of rebuke. Then you see backward, look to the history of the former Muslim Ummah. It shouldn't be that you should also meet the same fate. But now this fourth ayah in the second part. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُطْفَعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ And this يُرِيدُونَ actually, it denotes only the Jews. These Jews, these Bani Israel, now the third phase has come and Muhammad has been sent by us as a messenger to all the people of the world. But now they are enemies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they want to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by blowing their mouths through their mouths. This is the character of Jews which has not changed. This was the character at the time of the Prophet always hatching conspiracies, instigating others, oh you come out, you attack, we shall help you from inside. The worst enemies. And that has continued throughout history. It's a fact that the Muslims gave them refuge in Spain. They were persecuted badly by the Christians in Europe. But Muslims gave them respect, rest, everything. Ben Yorion has said that Muslim Spain was the golden era of our diaspora. But then They were the people who conspired and instigated the Christians to launch the Crusades. It was instigated by them. Although when Crusades started, then they were also beaten along with the Muslims. But originally they were the instigators. And today now, Zionism, especially when they have conquered the Christian world, They are the worst enemies. 
they are hatching plots and that time is not very far off when there will be a final confrontation between the deen of Allah, deen of Muhammad sallallahu and the world of Judaism and Christianity. In the forefront will be Christians, but actually at the back and controlling them and directing them will be the Jews. And that Armageddon or Al-Mulhabutul Uzma is not very far off. It's going to come very soon now. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُطْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ They intend to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their mouths, that is by blowing. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ And Allah has decided that He will perfect His light. Although this might be not pleasant, not liked by the unbelievers. This perfection of light will be when? when Islam will become dominant over the whole of this globe. The light essentially was perfected at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you know, the area it covered was not the whole of the globe. But this light is to shine over the whole of the globe according to the prophecies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now this ayah number nine. This is not only the central uh, axis of this surah. This plus ayah number 25 of Surah Al-Hadid, they are the axis of the whole of Quran. That, that ayah number 25, Surah Al-Hadid, has slightly changed in the case of Muhammad Sallallahu If you recall, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا This was in plural. A general rule. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَ لَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَاهُمُ لِمَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لَيَقُومُ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ Now this general principle when applied to the advent of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم this is the form. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ Now this is singular. It is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has sent his messenger that is Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ Now, بَيِّنَاتْ The miracles. In case of Muhammad, the miracle is also Qur'an. So, kitab and بَيِّنَاتْ are merged into this book. بِالْهُدَى الْهُدَى This Qur'an. And the balance has perfected with the advent of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم the form of دِينُ الْحَقِّ Now, it's a full system of life. A full political, social, economic order. It is he who has sent his messenger with two things, with the total guidance, the final guidance, the complete guidance, that is Qur'an. And the deen of the just political, social, economic system of life. What for? So that he makes it dominant over all the systems of life. Walau karihal mushrikun. Although, the associators with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of false gods or false deities, they will never like it. But it is duty to do it. So now Muhammad was not only a bearer of glad tidings and a warner, but also a revolutionary role was assigned to him. We have that in Surah to Shura. I have been sent to establish justice amongst you. And all our passengers we send for this purpose, the Yaqub and Nasu will fist so that people should abide by justice. And now that justice has been perfected. In the form of Tinul Haq. Now to establish it over the whole human life, not a part of it, without any exception. This is the role assigned to him. This is the mission given to him. And for this now, those who claim that we believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very passionate call is being issued to them. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim. Oh, you who profess to believe, should I guide you to a trade? 
The profit of which will be that you will be saved from the painful chastisement of the hereafter. I told you this word trade is used at many places in the Quran. Simple to understand. If you are in a business, you must have some capital and then you have to work. In the same way, what for? You want some profit. In the same way, you will have, have to enter into a business. You will have to spend your money, your belongings, your wealth, and also your hard work, even your life. If you want to be saved from the painful chastisement of the day of, of the hereafter. Now what does it mean? If you don't enter into this bargain, and still you hope that you will have salvation in the hereafter, it's your wishful thinking. Allah doesn't guarantee it. It's a conditional thing. You can get salvation, but you have to do this business. Otherwise, this ayah becomes meaningless, futile. And what is that business? Tu minuna billahi wa rasooli. Have real faith in Allah and His Messenger. Who have been addressed, Ya ayyuladina amanu. And they are being told to have real belief. You have the belief, but your belief is only at the tip of your tongues. It should go down, sink down into the depths of your hearts. But to jahidu nafi sabirillahi bi awalikum wa nafasikum. And exert your utmost, strive your utmost in the way of Allah to make the deen of Allah supreme. What is the way of Allah? To make the deen of Allah supreme. This is the way of Allah. To exert your utmost. And you have two things. The amwalikum, with your belongings, manfusikum and your lives. This is better for you if you know. Now just recall ayah number 15 of Suratul Fajrat. We had a comprehensive definition of who is a real mu'min. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ سُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Verily the true mu'mins are only those who believe in Allah and the Messenger, then doubt not. Yaqeen. Conviction. And they strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their belongings and lives. Only such people are true when they claim that they are mu'min. So there can be no iman without jihad fi sabillah. And here, there can be no salvation without jihad fi sabillah. If even now we say that jihad fi sabillah is not farz, it's not obligatory. It's not ordained on us. I'm at a loss to understand. That means we are belying Quran. Quran says there's no real iman without jihad. There's no salvation possible without jihad. Yaqfir lakum zunubakum. Now what will happen if you do it? Allah will forgive you your shortcomings, number one. وَيُدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْحَارِ And will make you enter the garden underneath which rivers will be flowing. وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِ And grant you very pleasant dwellings in the gardens of perpetual bliss. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْضُ الْعَزِيمِ This is the greatest kamiyabi, this is the greatest success. It's very meaningful here, because another thing is mentioned after that. Another thing which you love, and that is, help from Allah and a near victory. What does it mean? These things have no importance in the eyes of Allah. In the eyes of Allah, the real success is the success of the hereafter. Whether in this world you succeed or not succeed, it's irrelevant. 
If you have done whatever you could do, you are successful. Nothing might have happened. No revolution might have appeared. You might not have seen the success, your struggle crowned with success, no harm. If you have done whatever you could do, if you have spent everything that you had, you are successful. That is the success. It is additional thing. This Allah grants sometimes, and sometimes doesn't grant. So many prophets of Allah went from this world without any visible, tangible success. So were they failures? No. They were successful. The nations failed, and then they were destroyed. Very important. For people who take this way, this path actually, they should stop thinking about success. Leave it. If a love it will come. If no, we don't care. We have to care for whether I am doing whatever I can do or I am sparing something, keeping back. That is the main issue. If I put everything, then I am successful. Now this actually, this surah was revealed in the year 6th after Hijra. And this position had matured after the battle of Ahsab, trenches, Khandaq. I told you that after the battle of Ahzab, the Prophet had told the Muslims, لَن تَغْزُوكُمْ قُرَيْشْ بَعْدَ عَمِكُمْ حَاذَا وَلَكِنَّ كُلْ تَغْزُونَهُمْ Now Quraysh will never be able to come and attack you. Now you will go towards them. So now the Muslims as a community, as an ummah, the companions of Muhammad sallallahu had passed that test when they stood fast in the battle of Ahzab. Though they had passed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them the glad tidings. Now, the help of Allah is near and very soon. Success will kiss your feet. So this is a particular, a, a time tied phenomenon. Not always. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still trying you. But at that time, this was the time for this glad tidings. And that is why that very year the Prophet went for Umrah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then the treaty of Hudaybiyah was concluded, and Allah declared, Inna fatahna laka fatah mubira. The gates of success opened. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu ansar Allah. Oh, you who believe, or, or profess to believe, be helpers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you mean? Allah is weak? No. But he is testing you that this way. If you help his deen, if you want to make his deen supreme, you are. By his blessing, he is taking you to be his helpers. Just as Isa, son of Maryam, had said to his disciples, Man Ansari Allah, who are my helpers towards Allah? Now this is helping Allah and helping the messenger. Kunu Ansar Allah, be helpers to Allah. And Hazrat Isa said, be my helpers towards Allah. The same two words came in the ayah of number 25 of Surah Al-Hadid. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لَيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ فِي بَاسُ الْشَدِيدِ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَيْ يَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ وَرُسُلَهُ بِالْغَيْبِ Allah wants to see who are His faithful servants who help Him and His messengers. So this is the help to Allah because this deen is Allah's deen. We want to make it supreme. And this is the help to messenger because to make it supreme was primarily the mission assigned to the messenger. So help to Allah and help to the messenger. قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ نَحْنُ أَنْسَارُ اللَّهِ The disciples of Isa said, we are the helpers of Allah. فَعَمَنَ الطَّائِفَةُ مِمَّنِ إِسْرَائِلَ وَكَفَرَ الطَّائِفَةُ Then the 
children of Israel got divided. A group of them believed in Isa, and the other group, they denied him, rejected him. But then we help those who had believed against their enemies. And in the long run, they were the triumphant, they were the dominants. But please note, this, th this thing took 300 years. Not immediately. Christians were badly persecuted by the Jews as well as the Romans. But there's no doubt, the followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they were very persevering, very persevering, very persevering. But then in the year 300 of Christian era, Emperor Constantine of Rome, he converted to Christianity. And the whole empire converted to Christianity. Now they were dominant. Now they started persecuting the Jews. And they were worst persecuted community at that time. From that time till the Muslims enter Europe. Now we come to Surah al -Jumah. I have already mentioned, this is a pair, and the most central pair of these ten surahs. In Surah Al-Saf, three things are very clear. Number one, Bhai was Muhammad said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Huwa allazi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen il haqq li yuzirahu wa la deen il kulli. Number two, if you are a true mu'min, if you want salvation in the hereafter, you have to make jihad for that cause. You have to do it. No escape. Number three, this jihad can reach the level of qital. Don't think it will always be a dawa only and a passive resistance. No, no, no. It is bound to reach that level and you will be required to lay down their lives in the battlefield. If you don't do it, don't hope for salvation. If you do it, then Allah will forgive you and make you enter paradise. And if you are not doing it, then then stop saying that you are Mu'min. Stop saying that you believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Don't say you believe in Allah and his, and his Messenger. Otherwise, saying something else and doing something else, it is not giving you any credit. It is adding to the discredit every time. Now the question arises, where from to get those people who will do this jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, there should be man force, man power. For that's what is the basic methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the topic of Surah al -Jubah. How he gathered people, how he trained them. That was most important. Unless you have a party group of most committed people ready to sacrifice everything, ready to lay down their lives, how can you proceed? But where to get these people from? Do they grow somewhere? Are there some trees, the fruit of which are these people? No. How? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, you subhanallah, mafi samawati wa mafi lord. This is the second place in the whole of Quran where four names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come consecutively. The first was also in this series, Surah Al Hadid, who was Awalo, Wal Akhiro, Wal Zahiro, Wal Batin. Here without wow, Al Malik Al Quddus Aziz Al Hakim. Everything is glorifying and will continue to glorify forever, whether that thing is in the heavens or in the earth. Glorifying whom? Allah, who is the King, the Sovereign, the Holy, the Mighty, and the Wise. 
ہو الزی باسف المین رسول امن ہوم اٹ از ہی ہو ہیز ویسڈ فرام امنگ دی ان لیٹرڈ ونس اے میسنجر فرام امنگ دیم سیلس وٹ ڈز دس میسنجر ڈو ناؤ دس از دی کروشل آیا یتلو علیہم آیاتہ و یزکیہم و یعلمہم الکتاب و الحکمہ These four terms are very basic, very essential. Repeated four times in the Quran. In the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail, Rabbana wa baqsihim rasoolam minhum yatlu alayhim ayateka wa yuallimuhum al-kitaba wal-hikmata wa yuzakkihim. Then when Allah says, we have granted the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail and advent of Muhammad is actually the manifestation of the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim as-salam. Kama arsalna fikum rasoolam minkum یتلو علیکم آیاتنا ویزکیکم ویعلمکم الکتاب والحکمہ Then for the third time in سورة آل عمران لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اِزْبَاسَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ یتلو علیہم آیاتہ ویزکیہم ویعلمہم الکتاب والحکمہ And for the fourth time here Now this is the basic methodology How we change people First recite unto them the آیات of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی This is like a magnet. The first experiment that we did in fifth class, I think, science class, science laboratory, there's a mixture of iron filings and wood pieces. How to separate the two? A mixture. Take each and one. No. Take a magnet. Move it. The iron filings will stick to the magnet and the wood will remain. This Quran is the magnet. To it, immediately get attached the people whose spirits in them have not died. Whose nature is still salim, not perverted. Healthy nature, they will come. So this is the magnet you in the society, you go on reciting Quran. As we found in in the Zalika la zikra le mankana lahu kalmun aw al qasama wa huwa shaheed. They will come. They will come and gather around you. Now, the second task is use a key and purify them. If they have some impurities in them, purify them. What are the impurities? Some bad habits may be there. Some wrong deeds, purify. Some worldly ambitions might be there. Purify the hearts. From the worldly ambitions. And now, when they are purified from within, and within has two aspects. Purification of the Brain, that is the thought. Purification of the thought. And purification of the intentions. Niya, that is in the heart. When this purification has taken place, now teach them the book and the hikmah. Three stages. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yuallim muhammul kitab wal hikmah. This was the basic methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He continued this work, continued this work for 12 long years at Makkah. So, about 150 people gathered around him, purified them, organized them, taught them the book and the wisdom. Now, those were the people who were in the vanguard for jihad fi sabillah. For two years, no Ansari was included. In Jihad Fisa Allah, it was a purely, exclusively Muhajir phenomenon. Ansaris were called only at the Battle of Badr. The eight expeditions before Badr, they were exclusively Muhajir phenomenon. This was the group prepared by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through this process of Yatlu Alayhim Ayatihi, Vayuzakkihim, Vayuallimuhum Al-Kitab Wa-Hikmah. Vayintanu bin Qablu Lafid Al-Alim Mubin, and verily before that they were In a very manifest error. 
And we have raised this messenger of ours, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not only for these unlettered people, others also who will be eventually with them, but they have not up till now joined them, because he is sent for the whole of humanity. After the Arabs, the Iranians will come, the Coptics will come, the Berbers will come, the you know. Turkistanis will come, the Sindhis will come, the Indians will come. So these are also. He was sent for them also, but primarily because he was himself from among the Ummiyin. So his primary advent was for the Ummiyin. He prepared an Ummah whose nucleus was consisting of the Ummiyin. But then you know the electrons one after the other coming, and you know sir, sir come. Uh, ambulating that nucleus, so this is the constitution of this ummah. Wa akhirina minhum lamma yalhaku bihim. They have not joined them up till now. Wa huwa lazizul hakim. Definitely, he is almighty and the wise. I have told you before. These two names of Allah are repeated in these surahs. Most, you know, recurrently. Al aziz, al hakim. ذلك فضل الله يطيه من يشاء. This is the bounty of Allah. He grants it to himself, to whomsoever he wishes. والله ذو الفضل العظيم. And definitely Allah is of infinite bounty. Now again, just as we had the example of the former Muslim Ummah, the Jews, the Bani Israel. Now again, example. Oh Muslims, you are today being given Quran. They were given Torah. What they did with Torah? See that you don't do that with Quran. Masalul Lazina Hummelu Torah Kasumalam Yahmeluha. The similitude of those who were entrusted with the responsibility of Torah, but they didn't carry it out. Kamasalil Himar Yahmelu Asfara. That is like a donkey laden with books. On a donkey, you might load, you know, volumes of philosophy or volumes of science. To what avail for him? In the same way, an ummah, which has been entrusted with the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, doesn't fulfil its duties regarding it. I mentioned one of my basic pamphlets, Muslimano par Quran e Majid ke hukuk, but the Muslims owe to Quran. It is present in English also, Urdu also, Persian also, Arabic also. Masal al Qawmi Nadina, Besa Masal al Qawmi Nadina Kazabu Bi Ayatullah. Very bad and wretched is the example of the people who belie the revelations of Allah. Now this is Takzeeb. Did the Jews ever say that Torah was not sent by Allah? Never. But this is the practical belying. When you don't act upon it, that is, you are belying it. With your action, had you really believed this is the word of Allah, you would have acted upon it. This means you are saying something else, doing something else. Your attitude denotes something else. Allah Hu La Yahdil Qabul Salimin, and Allah doesn't forcibly guide such evil doers. And what is the reason of this this attitude of a Muslim Ummah? The Muslim Ummah. When it is entrusted with a high mission, instead of looking to the responsibilities of that mission, they take pride that we are the Muslims and we are the Muslim Ummah and we are the Ummah of the Prophet of Messenger. On this pride, they think that they are entitled to salvation, whatever they do. The salvation. In the hereafter is their birthright. They must get it. So then, if this salvation is your birthright, what's the need of doing something? Why to differentiate between halal and haram, permissible and forbidden? Why? Do whatever you like. You will get the salvation anyhow. This is the reason. Kul ya yu Allah zina hadu in zam tu manna ko maliya aur illai min doni nas se. Oh, you. Who have become Jews? 
if you assert that you are alone and last friends apart from the rest of the mankind, then you should long for death. If you have real love with someone, you want to meet him, not to be keep away from him. If you love Allah, and if you really think that Allah loves you, then you should, you should like that you should die and go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَايَتَمَنَّوْنَهُ أَبَدًا And they are not going to long for this death. بِمَا قَدْمَ تَعْدِيهِمْ Because of the deeds that their hands have forwarded for them. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ Allah very well knows these evil doers. قُلِدَ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُونَ مِنْهُ Say to them, The death from which you flee, فَإِنَّهُ مَلَاقِيكُمْ Surely it will encounter you. It will come and meet you. You might be running away from the death, but it will come before you. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ Then you will be returned to Allah, who is the knower of the seen and the unseen. فَيُنَبِّيَوْكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And then he will tell you what you had been doing. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now this process which Muhammad Sassim continued, this يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِمْ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ This was then institutionalized in the form of Friday. You know, there were no schools, no colleges, no books, no journals, no video audio tapes. So the only method of education mass education, public education, was this weekly meeting of the believers. Take bath, change your clothings. If you have some scent, use it. Come to the mosque. And there, some, one in the place of the Prophet. The Prophet used to stand on that member. Now someone is standing, this is the member of Rasul, of the Messenger. And he will do the same job. This was the basic purpose of this Juma, which later on became a ritual. Nothing. Nothing left in it. It's a ritual. That's all. It was actually the greatest system of mass education, adult education, public education. Reminding them, reminding them, reminding them. You have been entrusted with a mission. Kuntum khaira ummatin khurijat lil naas taamruna bil ma'roofat anhona lil mulkar. To remind them that was actually the purpose. Every revolutionary party, every revolutionary party, even the communists, they used to have their weekly meetings, renewing their thoughts, their ideologies, so that they remain fresh in their minds, so that they are fully engaged in the struggle. And this is it. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu iza nudi ali salat ni yawm il jumu'ati fas'au ila zikri illahi madar il ba'i. Oh, you who believe, when the call is given for the prayer, congregational prayer, on Friday, that is the jumu'ah prayer, فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ to hasten to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَذَرُوا الْبَعِ Leave all your trading, everything. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ This is good for you if you only know. It was so important that the Prophet said مَنْ تَرَكَ سَلَاسَ جُمُعَاتٍ بِغَيْرِ عُزْرٍ لَيَخْتِمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ Whosoever Muslim leaves three Friday prayer sermons, congregations, without attending them, without there being very real cause, why should we seek? There is something else. Baghair Uzrin, Allah is sure to seal his heart. This is so important. When the prayer has been concluded, and the most important part of Juma is not the prayer, it's the khutbah. 
پریئر یو نو زہر ہے فور رکعت این ان جمعہ دیر آر ٹو پریئر وائز ناٹ امپورٹنٹ اٹس دی خطبہ ایکچولی بیکاز دیٹ از دی دیٹ از مینٹ فار ایجوکیشن ریڈیوئنگ دی آئیڈیالوجی ان یور مائنڈس سو دیٹ از دی ایسینشیل پارٹ فائزہ کو دیر دی صلاح تو وین دی پریئر ہیو بین کنکلوڈیڈ فن تشروف فی اللہ وین یو کین اور یو میر دس پرسن دی لینڈ وابتاہو من فضل اللہ ان سیک اللہ اس باؤنٹی ان ریمیمبر نسکر اللہ کثیر اللہ اللہ کن تفلحون ریمیمبر من اللہ مچ سو دیٹ یو آر سکسیسفل ناو اسپیشل ایونٹ اس ان دی بیک گراؤنڈ آف دی لافت آیا آف دی سورہ جمعہ ونس دیر واس مچ ڈرت آف grains in Medina, no wheat, no rice, etc., etc. And then when the Prophet ﷺ was giving his sermon on you know, Friday, there was, the bells started ringing that some caravan is coming. They came to know that a caravan has come, you know, and then there is grain. So if other people go first, maybe they are finished. So most of the people ran and left Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying his sermon. So on this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has, you know, rebuked them. وَإِذَا رَعُوا تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوَنِ الْفَضْلُ إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا And when they saw some merchandise or sport, they dispersed headlong to it, flocked to it eagerly and left you, O Prophet, standing. It is said that at that time, This Juma sermon was also after the prayer, just as we have in Eids, in Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Asha. First we pray, and then is the khutbah. That was the case at that time. Then it was changed. Khutbah before Salah. Zakaras marabbihi fasalla. First you take the name of Allah, and then you pray. But at that time, it is one of the opinions that because people thought Salah, we have already. Completed. Now this is khutbah. So there is no great importance of it. We can go. No. But the, the real essence of Jumah is khutbah. It's the sermon. It has made, khutbah has made Jumah the Jumah. Otherwise there was Zohar Salah. Qul ma inda Allahi khairu min Allahu ya bin atijara. Say to them, whatever is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is much better then the sport and the merchandise, whatsoever is, concerns this world, this is much better which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you as reward. Wallahu khairul raziqeen. And you should have the faith that Allah is the best provider. He will provide for you. Now to sum up this pair of those two, two, two surahs. The most important part of Quran regarding the issue of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why was Muhammad sent? Not only as a preacher, not only as a teacher, not only as a bearer of glad tidings, not only as a warner, but also to make the deen of Allah supreme, to establish it as a whole political, social, economic system. This should be clear, absolutely. And this ayah, هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليزهره على الدين كله. It appears three times in Quran. Surah Al-Tawbah. Then we have read in Surah Al-Fatih. The last part is different. وكفى بالله الشهيدا. But this part, major part, هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليزهره على الدين كله. It is repeated without the change of a dot or a letter. So for that, alone Muhammad cannot do it. He needs helpers, faithful helpers, committed, devoted, ready to sacrifice everything, disciplined, in the habit of listening and obeying, moving when commanded, stopping when ordered. So now this work has to be done by those who say, who claim that they believe in Allah and His Messenger. For this purpose, first of all, through Qur'an, dawa of Qur'an, dawa through Qur'an, call people toward this path. Whosoever has some life 
within him, not the physical life, but the spiritual life, he will respond. Sooner or later, there might be difference, but he will respond. He will accept. Now you have to purify their souls, their characters, their thought, their intentions. Teach them the Book of Allah and the wisdom of that Book of Allah. Now prepare them. And then, when the time comes, challenge Kufr and Batil and Tahut. Challenge it in the battlefield. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He decrees, His help will come and you will be successful. Otherwise, if you have laid down your life for that cause, you are successful. The real success is the salvation of the hereafter. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikla. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.